Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. So now, uh, what is uh, like uh, what is vendor invoice management or what is VIM basically? Uh, so VIM stands for the vendor invoice management, and uh, uh, like it is one of the module in Open Text. Uh, Open Text is one of the company basically which uh, which is having uh, a various products available in the market, and VIM is one of the one of the product of Open Text. Uh, as the name suggests, vendor invoice management, what it actually does, basically uh, it helps in uh, uh, processing the vendor invoices. So, uh, so like for example, um, uh, like there is an organization and the vendor and, uh, and uh, whenever the organization and vendor is dealing uh, with each other, after that um, uh, vendor sends an invoice uh, to the organization uh, to pay. Uh, for whatever the services or goods uh, the organization received and uh, for those services or goods basically like uh, uh, like the ones the vendor sends an invoice so that is something which which we need to process it uh, in in the ERP systems and uh, and once it is being processed and then after it, the payment will be released to the vendor accordingly so vim is specifically only to process the invoices or to propose the invoices not for the payment part okay so so that is the reason basically we always say it as a vendor invoice management because that invoice comes like it in uh, it manages the vendor invoices so uh, vendor invoice management is an open text proprietary solution which is designed to automate the vendor invoice processing of a business uh, it is it is a packaged business uh, solution for managing vendor invoices. Uh, Vim solves a business problems paying correct amount to vendors on time and with the lowest cost. Now, whenever we are discussing about the vendor invoice management, it is like we can have a maximum validations. Uh, we can put maximum validations in the Open Text VIM tool so that the invoices cannot be posted wrongly. Like. If I want that certain information to be verified from the master data, so that is something which uh, uh, like we can put the logic accordingly while post uh, like in the vendor invoice management system uh, so that the invoices should be corrected uh, or should be checked properly while processing. So, so it basically uh, like uh, it helps in exception handlings. Uh, it, uh, it is having the functionality where we can route the uh, uh, route the invoices to the uh, uh, to the requesters to the approver so that the, the person can provide their approver and then only the invoice can be posted so all such type of controls basically we can have it in uh, vendor invoice management and also this is uh, we we call this particular tool as an automation tool also because um, uh, it is having an inbuilt OCR functionality which uh, which extracts the information from face of the invoice and after that BIM helps in processing the invoices by having a proper validations in the system so that the invoice can be posted correctly. So end to end basically uh, if we uh, like um, uh, if we look into it so start from getting the invoice copy from the vendor until invoice posting. This is uh, the, the entire cycle basically can be automated in vendor invoice management where we can have a very less interactions uh, of the AP processors and uh, uh, like um, the, with the less interac interaction of the AP processors uh, like it saves a lot of uh, a cost and so a, co a cost to the business uh, because if there are less AP processors and all then it, it helps them basically uh, in terms of saving the cost and all. And uh, so this is the this is few of the benefits basically which vendor invoice management is having. So I think uh, uh, you guys got the fair idea about it. What exactly the vendor invoice management does, uh, and this these are the benefits basically which it yeah, it is having it. Okay, so now basically uh, vim is a is a sap centric and it is an add on to your sap erp or uh, s4 hana systems okay so uh, so this is uh, uh, so vim basically sits just before the sap transaction code 
so uh, i don't know uh, what is the background of uh, of you guys but um, uh, like in sap uh, to post uh, the invoice in the system so like uh, there are two separate transaction codes one for po another one for non po because these are the two different um, uh, scenarios basically which we can have it one is for purchase order posting and another one is for the non po posting so to post the invoice um, uh, for the po based invoices uh, basically we use the miro uh, miro transaction code uh, let me just uh, show you here also so this is one of the transaction code Uh, this is one of the transaction code to post the invoices. So if you guys, uh, if you just see it uh, here, like to post any of the vendor invoices, uh, what are the uh, what are the minimum bare fields basically which is required to post it? So like invoice date, vendor invoice date, vendor invoice reference, vendor invoice amount, tax amount, company code, purchase orders. So so like if you see here, this is the purchase order section. So this particular transaction code basically. Uh, so this is a miro transaction code so this is uh, this particular transaction code is used to post the invoice in sap not in vim i am not talking about the vim as of now i am just giving you some insight about the sap how it works basically so this is the standard transaction code uh, uh, like in sap to post the po based invoices uh, the another transaction code to post the non no, no, before you jump to the other transaction sorry to stop you I have a small question here yeah, because please. you said this is an sap standard uh, miro is an sap standard right and yeah. on top of it we do have vim what right. would what is the relation now when the po is getting generated or when you are executing the miro transaction it is totally sap one so can you just explain like you know here in this screen only do we have any like for example the data which is getting stored that is specific with sap right nothing to do with open text on this particular correct. scenario correct correct so uh, let me uh, like let's let's go one by one step uh, okay. here let's talk about the sap transaction code first then okay, after it we'll come to the vim one okay. so there is no relation in, in this scenario it's relation. just a miro you are talking about there is a relation uh, okay. between open text vim and the sap transaction codes basically vim sits before uh, before miro transaction so there is a, another transaction code to post the invoice in vim which calls the miro transaction to post it okay so maybe further when when you start explaining i think at that time i could get a clear understanding yes, again that's what i'm saying right okay. currently because um, okay. uh, uh, the people basically who is available might be not aware about the sap so that is the reason why i'm just highlighting it this is the sap transaction code and then after it we will jump to the vim how it is how it calls and all that that we will discuss it in the presentation okay so uh, to post the po based invoices we use miro transaction code and uh, so like uh, you have seen it already purchase order right and to post the non po invoice we have fb60 transaction code fb60 uh, transaction yeah someone saying something okay no Sorry, okay mistake yeah no problem so uh, like this is one of the transaction code if you uh, if you see here this is a fb60 transaction code so fv60 transaction code uh, uh, is uh, uh, is used to post the non po invoices so here you will not find the purchase order reference at all so uh, uh, like directly we can book the uh, uh, book the invoice against a gl account cost centers directly so this is the uh, like direct fi posting okay so these are the two transaction codes basically for the different scenarios we use it uh, in sap to post the invoices so these are the sap transaction codes and as i said that vim basically sits before these two transaction codes and it calls these two transaction code to post it because uh, like the other transaction data or the master data is available in sap uh, like for example purchase order purchase order is created in sap right uh, so how it gets linked and all everything i will discuss it later on uh, let's uh, move, jump to the um, uh, to the presentation
Okay. Now basically Vim uses uh, various SAP technology and it is very highly integrated with uh, 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 with SAP like uh, like to write any of the customization anything in the Vim we, we need to use the ABAP code. So ABAP is one of the language basically which we use it in SAP. Also OpenText Vim supports the ABAP language. So to write anything in uh, even though the code basically which is written in uh, in OpenText VIM everything is written in the ABAP language. Okay, so Vim uses the various SAP technologies like ABAP workflow, SAP NetWeaver portal. Also, it uses the SAP uh, material management module, SAP uh, 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 FICO module. So it it is directly integrated with each and every transaction code. Uh, now coming back to the coming to the Vim versions uh, like um, so OpenText Vim 20.4 is supported until November 2025. So OpenText has come up uh, like uh, like there are di different different versions basically which OpenText is having it. Whenever we are going with the fresh implementations or something, so uh, like basically uh, the infrastructure team always takes or the OpenText or SAP recommends the latest uh, version uh, uh, version of the tool. Uh, now, why the version gets changed every time? Uh, what is the need of it? Because, uh, like, like, uh, like, uh, the, how the organization basically works. Like, for example, if there are certain features, right? If there are certain features which is available, then uh, what the organization or the company do? It just adds more features into it, and then after they just roll out and call it as a different version. So like for example Android version if you know right that the Android version so iOS version so uh, every time a company comes up with the new features and all and they they just uh, rolled out all those versions. So the same thing basically uh, also happens with the with the different technologies and also with the open text. So open text uh, Vim 220.4 which is a recent version basically in which is there in S4. And in ERP system, it is OpenText Vim 7.6. Uh, uh, so this is the uh, this is the recent version, basically, which is going on. Uh, going forward, might be they can come up with the newer versions and all. But this is the current version, basically, which OpenText is recommending, uh, and every uh, every client is going with with this particular version. Sorry, Sanjay. Sorry, Sanjay. Sorry, Sanjay. Sorry, Sanjay. Yeah. So open text Vim 20.4 version contains so how many is it kind of a different workflows or anything uh, will you be able uh, will you be able to elaborate the what kind of workflows it's supporting. I mean uh, recently we have an upgrade it's called uh, IES we have an uh, extraction OCR. So right. is it IES or any other thing. No, 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 no. It is a, okay. These are the different topic. Uh, I think uh, let's not go to that I, IES part. But to just to answer your question, basically IES is a OCR tool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I agree that. Um, I, when okay. I'm saying when I'm saying Open Text Vim 20.4, it is more about like what is installed in the ERP system. Okay. Okay. So OCR part is different thing. IES, uh, uh, IES, if you're talking about which is a uh, which is a recent uh, OCR product of Vim, which is having the machine learning and artificial intelligence capability. So that particular tool is supported in OpenText Vim 20.4. It was even it is even supported in OpenText Vim 7.6. It was even uh, it is even supported in OpenText Vim 7.5. Okay, okay. Sorry, I was. I'm not a techie guy. I'm just kind of a basic end user. I use Vim, so I just want to. Um, yeah, yeah. No problem. Thing. No problem. Uh, so th that's what I'm saying. Like uh, IES is the OCR part here. When I'm talking about the version, it is most mostly uh, like it is being installed in the ERP system. Mm -hmm. Now, how how you guys will do the bifurcation? Basically, if it is a two digit, uh, like two digit number. Uh, or like two digit number of the version like for example if you see here um, like 16.3 20.4 right 16.3 yeah. and 20.4 is there so this is being available this can only be uh, uh, managed or run in S4 HANA version okay good okay but if it is a one digit number then it means that if someone is saying that I am using open text Vim 7.6 then it means that they are into the ERP version. 
okay so sorry yeah, uh, yeah, can you come again a bit again please a bit if it's a 20.4 it means that uh, they are into the s4 hana s4 and, yeah s4 hana uh, okay. and uh, if they are saying like if they are using open text vim 7.5 7.6 then it means that they are into the ecc version okay okay now what so, is the difference so between ecc and s no, is no, it our system yeah Oh. Oh, maybe we need to talk a bit about uh, how many basic versions of uh, vim we have it and what what is the like you know uh, it supports for hana for example now you said 7.6 it won't be supported for hana if we have the hana then definitely they have to go for the upgraded version right. Uh, that, right. that could be 20.4 or starting 16. Dot also we can use it no 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 uh, like basically uh, see like uh, how the company works and all uh, it is just like they open text even uh, suggest to go with the latest their latest version because uh, their previous version they have to obsolete it right in some day uh, in some uh, days and time uh, like for example open text vim 16.3 is going to support until december 2022 so there is no meaning like if if any client will go to the open text vim 16.3 because uh, open text will come up by saying no no boss i am not going to support at all uh, after december 2022 then what they have to do they have to upgrade to 20.4 so whenever no, no. they are if open text is not supporting it they can the customers who are already having 16 dot something they can continue right maybe they may not have the high features but still there are an options like you know if the customer is not interested they can continue with 16.4 only we can recommend them to get upgraded it is up to the customer they have to use 16 or 20 it is not uh-huh. a hard and fast rule that you know customers will be closing down uh, because they don't want to upgrade it they just just uh, uh, because there are this type of questions where it is coming in the market you know uh, with the customers as well now right now the customer who is having 16.0 they don't, they are not interested to go to 20.0 but still they can continue right i know open text won't support but still with the existing one they can run on their business No, oh, they can they can use it, but what if if the any okay. technical issue comes, right? Then they are not hmm. going to support anything. So it is always okay. advisable to to be there in the current version or the recent okay. version, right? right? It is Got not it. If, yeah. if you will be like for example, um, ERP versions. ERP is something basically where SAP say, uh, ECC version uh, where uh, SAP said that uh, they are going to support till twenty twenty five, right? Then yep. after that. like you have to migrate to s4 hana otherwise i am not going to support it right okay got it people can yeah. people can use it people can even so use when, it when, but when, when major yeah, issues yeah. come if for example we are raising oss notes and all right mm. they will not support it if you are in the, in the in the previous versions so that is how the the organization or the company works because they also want to earn more right uh, based on the new with the new credential with the new licenses with the new uh, versions okay so this is a basic idea about it and this is how it works for everywhere like not for open text or sap it it works for each and every technology mm-hmm. okay yeah thank you thank you yeah no problem any questions anyone okay now uh, going to the next slide uh, so now let's try to understand it what exactly the vim is and how the data flows from uh, one stage to the another stages okay so in a very simpler way basically if i want to define the vim i will say it as a digital integrated and automated invoice processing okay so now if you see here on the left hand side this is your supplier now who is your supplier like your vendor right with who uh, like with whom basically we are taking any services or goods correct so those are my suppliers or those are my vendors now on the middle side if you see here these are the part basically which is related to the vim okay and on the right hand side this is the payment part so payment part as i said in the starting payment is out of scope of from the vim so payment part needs to be done in sap only uh, but the invoice processing or invoice posting part is something which will be taken care in the vim 
now how the data flows from one stage to another stage in open text vi so for example i am going like for example the organization wants to procure hundreds of laptops okay they want to procure hundreds of laptops now what they will do they will just go into the market find it out the different vendors like they have find hp as a one type vendor uh, dell uh, um, uh, mac pro like that they have find a different different vendors uh, and they have asked them to provide the uh, to provide them the quotation okay once they get the quotation then they will do the price comparison the quality check configurations and all and based on it they will uh, uh, they will uh, do a deal a deal with the with one vendor and and then after that they will release they will share the purchase order uh, to that particular vendor for, for, for which basically they want to procure okay so so now once uh, uh, like uh, once the po is created then after that what will happen like they will send uh, the vendor will send the goods uh, uh, like the, they will send the hundreds of laptops to the organization and uh, organization when i am saying like let's take the company abc company abc wants to procure hundreds of laptops and they have finalized that they are going to uh, going with the hp vendor after that what hp uh, like uh, what the abc company needs to do abc company needs to send uh, the purchase order to the hp vendor and uh, that is a legal document or external document basically which we send it to the vendor uh, with the terms and conditions uh, that this is the rate uh, this is the quantity and all everything will be mentioned in the purchase order after that what the uh, hp vendor will do hp vendor will deliver the hundreds of laptops to the organization correct uh, so the company abc has received uh, those hundreds of laptops and then after that uh, like they will also share the invoices invoice uh, uh, when actually they are delivering the goods or, or when when they are delivering the laptops okay so so now so this is the place basically where vendor has sent the invoice and it has it has received uh, or it has come to the company abc okay now what is the next step the company abc needs to process the invoice right and after process after processing the invoice they need to pay to the vendor accordingly correct now how do how can like how should we uh, do invoice processing in vim so once the invoice basically comes so let's suppose it has come with the hard copy invoice as a hard copy invoices so hard copy invoice basically uh, needs to convert into the soft copy invoice okay and that will help uh, in storing the like uh, like that will help basically in terms of or like from the audit pers uh, perspective so once the team converts the invoice uh, from hard copy to soft copy soft copy means like that is uh, like uh, uh, like attachments and all like we, we can use it and open it in the laptop also okay so once those invoices converts into the soft copy then someone needs to upload the invoice in the vim system okay so so they need to upload the invoice in the vim system so to upload the invoice in the vim system the transaction code is slash o a w d okay so this is a store documents okay so this is a place basically where the soft copy invoice which gets converted we can upload it into the vim okay so this is the transaction code o a w d which we use it to upload the invoice into the vim because how the like we cannot upload hard copy invoices into the system right we have to convert it to the soft copy and that is something which uh, my ocr or my ap processor can read it and can check it in the same screen uh, uh, like can check it in the vim screen itself okay 
Now, what is the benefit basically to upload those invoices uh, in this particular transaction code? It basically helps uh, during the audit. Uh, and if anyone wants, like for example, if any issue comes during the audit, so any uh, like auditor wants to know the invoices and all. So it is just a handy and it is available in the system itself. So uh, like the team can go and can just download those invo invoices and can showcase uh, to the auditor accordingly. So this, this basically helps from the audit perspective also uh, in terms of getting uh, and retrieve the, those invoices. Uh, so once we upload the invoices, then uh, it will be uploaded into the Vim system. So that is what we call it as an ingestion. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.